Kia ora and welcome back to Wellywood Wargaming. My name is Damon and we are here to talk about Necromunda. Now, in this episode of my gang guides, um, so to speak, I thought it was only natural to bring in the heavy artillery, or not artillery so much, but heavy chain cleavers. And of course, we're going to be talking about the Corpse Grinder Cult. Now this is going to be quite a funny one because I do have my own opinions and my opinions are quite strong so of course you're not necessarily going to agree with everything I say here and that's absolutely fine. Um, you know Necromunda is, is not a balanced game, um, there are many interpretations of how the rules work and of course um, yeah Corpse Grinders. <laughs> Where to begin basically. If you're not familiar with Corpse Grinders they are a unique gang in the Necromunda setting. They are basically a bunch of nutcase cannibals um, running around with chain weapons and they are incredibly, incredibly broken basically. Um, now that is up for debate whether they are indeed broken or not. Some people will say no they're not at all. Um, personally they are, I think, I believe fully that they are the best gang in the game in the right hands. However, I do think that as Necromunda is an unbalanced game naturally, um, and of course there are counters to strong gangs and stuff, I do think that there is a place for an ultra powerful gang and this is it. Um, so Corpse Grinders, um, a bunch of screaming cannibals who kind of secretly worship the blood god Corn, or as they call it, the uh, god of skin and sinew or the lord of skin and sinew. These guys um, are just fucking nuts, basically, and they're the elephant in the room when it comes to Necromunda, and um, if you're playing campaigns with many people and someone takes the Corpse Grinder Cult gang, it's usually a bone of contention with the other players. Uh, and I'm going to get into it, into the specifics of why that is, um, but here we go, Corpse Grinders. So Corpse Grinder Cults. Now I'm going to start at the very beginning. Um, I've kind of given you an overview of what they are, um, but in terms of um, the tiering of them, if you were to put tiers on gangs in Necromunda in terms of the level of good to bad, Corpse Grinders are up there in tier zero, I would say, if there was a say tier zero, two, one, two, three. Corpse Grinders are right at the very top, um, and I don't really think that's up for debate. I think most people who know this game will agree with me that Corpse Grinders are either the strongest gang in the game or they are one of the strongest gangs in the game. There are certainly other lists that you can make that will trump this, but in the right hands, as I've said before, these guys are absolutely off the chain. Cleaver. Um, there you go. That's a dad joke for you. Um, now, first up, I just want to talk about are they beginner friendly or not because this is something that I probably should be mentioning with most of the gang guides that I do. Um, if you're a new player, someone new to Necromunda, are these gangs um, beginner friendly so to speak? Um, with Corpse Grinders I think definitely yes actually. Um, the reason being, um, firstly they are quite simple in terms of the gang structure. You've got four different fighter types and I'm going to go into those in some more detail but you haven't got too much complexity. The starting house list is quite minimalist. Half of your fighters are only cl close combat guys and the other half are just silly. Um, but they're good for that reason, for beginners. They're also good for beginners because you are going to win games no matter how inexperienced you are, um, just on sheer goodness of the actual gang itself. Um, so bear that in mind too. Um, there are certainly much more complex gangs and gang lists out there which I wouldn't recommend for beginners but these are one I, I would actually recommend for beginners and I think if you're completely new and you've never played any sort of similar game then Corpse Grinders are quite a good way to pick up the mechanics and actually get a few wins even though you're relatively inexperienced basically. They are, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to need to clear my throat a lot for this because there's, um, there's some serious shit to talk about here. Um, now, how do they play, basically? Um, as you can probably imagine, these guys are close combat monsters. They are the best, um, or at least one of the best, close combat gangs in the game. Um, the corpse grinders themselves, which take up usually half of your gang, 
um, are insanely good at close combat. Um, these guys excel at close combat. They can't do anything else. They don't get access to shooty weapons. They aren't shooters at all. So in that way, they are almost the polar opposite of a Van Saar gang um, in terms of the shooty shootiness. So, um, however, they are kind of offset by having very, very cheap initiates who are, um, well, I'm going to go into the specifics of why initiates are so broken, but I would actually say that initiates are the most broken thing about the Corpse Grinder lists. Um, if you are that person who um, wants to, uh, you know, break the game a little bit, then there's, there's a lot of room to do that with Corpse Grinders. And that mainly comes from the initiates, to be honest, and those are your sort of basic gangers. So, <clears throat> getting into it, I'm going to talk about the strengths and weaknesses now. I think um, this, is, this is quite um, a, an interesting topic. Now the strengths are obviously pretty, pretty clear here. They, they have a lot of strengths. So the strength that we've got here is obviously Corpse Grinders excel at close combat and they can actually get into close combat. A lot of gangs, gangs struggle to get into close combat sometimes. Um, but these guys will get in um, for a number of reasons and tactical um, choices that you can make to, to help them get in. Um, they get Corpse Grinder masks. Um, I'm going to talk in more detail about what individual masks do, but essentially the Corpse Grinder masks give them extra saves and they also make them much, much harder to target and hit because it usually means that you have to pass a willpower check to actually target one of these fighters at all, whether it be a fight, a charge, or, a, or a, um, a shoot action there as well. So if you're a gang with low willpower, like Ogrins or um, Goliaths perhaps, then these guys are a hard counter towards you and you are gonna be in lots of trouble if you don't have the right strategies in place. Now, um, they have a high combat success, um, so they have a high damage output, they have lots of high damage weapons in close combat and they get shit tons of attacks uh, as well. So when they do get in, they're hitting you with tons of attacks, um, they're usually hitting you very reliably, um, usually with twos, um, and they, they're doing enough damage to take you down pretty much every time without you getting a chance to fight back. So there's another strength for you. Um, another thing is Infiltrate. Now Infiltrate is a skill that you get for free on all your initiates and that is kind of disgusting when I go through and tell you exactly what these guys can do. Um, so something that's actually quite unique to um, Corpse Grinders is that they get starting skills on pretty much every guy, pretty much. Um, your leader gets a starting skill, your champions get a starting sort of effect, your gangers, your specialists get a starting skill and your initiates get a starting skill, um, which is unprecedented really, and that's not included in their sort of credit cost, their value, um, their gang rating value so much. Um, so again, that's something that makes them incredibly good is that they get skills out of the box. They also get armor out of the box. They come with plate mail or flak armor respectively, depending on which, which type of fighter we're talking about here, which is something that most gangs have to pay for too. So you don't even have to pay for that on creation, which is um, again, a, a freebie that you get there which again makes them very, very potent, very powerful gangs. Um, and um, yeah, that, those, are, those are the main strengths. They've also got some really good tactics cards too. Um, and they've got excellent skills in savagery and, um, and combat as well. So um, there you go. Uh, now their weaknesses, I'm just gonna go straight out and say it and that they don't really have any weaknesses. Um, now you might be thinking, of course they do. Of course they have counters. They, now they do have counters you can counter them in certain ways, but you can do that with any gang. Um, corpse Grinders don't have any weaknesses beyond any other gang. Um, they are generally stronger than most other gangs. Um, however, there are things you can do to mitigate those strengths. Um, the first thing that you can do is that if you're playing against a gang that's got, if you're Corpse Grinders and you're playing against a gang that's got lots of template weapons, that can be a problem for you. If, if your opponent is able to pin you often, that is the main way of stopping you charging and stopping you get into close combat. Um, and also weird powers. Now that weird powers are a thing, I think that that does make them slightly more vulnerable, but again, it doesn't make them any more vulnerable than anyone else. However, if you send a butcher insane with your weird uh, and he charges into your own guys, then he's taking them out for sure. Um, so that's a thing too. So if you can hit these guys and pin them, 
then that's kind of one way of trying to beat them. Um, and really just playing lots of varied scenarios against them so that you're not just forced into a brutal and bloody um, brawl because you're just going to lose um, against corpse grinders basically. Um, the other <coughs> weakness that they have is that corpse grinders playing corpse grinders is something that's hilarious because generally speaking corpse grinders haven't actually got good willpower so those masks backfire on themselves so if you're playing a mirror match between corpse grinders and corpse grinders that can usually be a bit of a standstill which is quite funny too so that's wor worth bearing in mind too um, what I'm going to do now though is I'm going to get into the individual individual fighter types um, and talk about those um, and you can see what I mean about how powerful these guys are so now we're going to get into the fighter types that are available for Corpse Grinder Cults in Necromunda. Um, and first up we're going to talk about the leader. Now the leader is known as a butcher. Um, for obvious reasons he does butcher everything that he touches pretty much. Um, and here are his stats. So your leader is going to have an average movement of 5. He's got a weapon skill of 2+, plus, which is very very good. Um, We've got a ballistic skill of 4+, plus, which is something, a stat that we're never going to really use um, because they don't get access to shooting weapons at all. Um, they've got a strength and toughness of 4, which is very, very good again, so similar to a Goliath here. Um, we've got two wounds, an initiative of a 4 up, two attacks, which isn't, you know, it isn't crazy, but you'll see what makes it good in a minute. Um, and then their mental stats are very, very good, actually. They've got a leadership of 5, um, a call of 5, a willpower of five and um, an intelligence of seven as well so they're absolutely no slouches mentally either um, <clears throat> so you I don't know I don't know if you, if you redid this I'm going to talk about maybe um, why you might errata corpse grinders or nerf them in some way and maybe you could um, decrease the uh, mental stats on these guys and they'd still be insanely good but there you go um, now these guys are incredibly good um, your Butcher is the focal point for your whole gang, um, just slightly desire in most gangs, but this guy is really, really important, especially because he has such a high call. He's going to stop um, people, people bottling. He's not going to leave the field, basically, if he does bottle out as well, which is nice. Um, and he gets a special ability or a special sort of starting skill almost, which um, means that he gets to, instead of roll a D3 when charging, he gets to roll a D6 when charging instead, which is amazing. Really, really good for getting into combat. Um, he's also got a 6-up unmodifiable save with his um, Butcher's Mask. Um, and that Butcher's Mask is also gives him the terrifying ability, which means that you need to pass a willpower check to shoot him, fight him, charge him, basically. Um, now, <coughs> most gangs have average willpower. Um, some gangs have terrible willpower, especially Ogrins and um, Goliaths, like I mentioned earlier. But there are gangs that do have slightly higher than average willpower. Um, Delac come to mind here. Um, so there are gangs that are better at shooting these guys, but um, yeah, still, they're pretty powerful. Um, they also come with plate mail, which is pretty good armor as well. I think it gives you a 5-up save off the top of my head. Um, it's similar to um, furnace plates, I believe. Um, and they also get brawn and combat skills along with leadership skills there as well. So if you did go down the leadership route, you could take um, Iron Will, for example, if you're running a small crew. but Corpse grinders are actually quite cheap, weirdly, um, so you don't really need to take that as much. It's worth noting here that you do not get access to ferocity skills on this gang. They are a secondary skill choice, um, which is thank, thank corn that you can't get ferocity skills because that would make them even more broken because you'd be able to get access to nerves of steel. Let's keep them standing and get them into charging easier. So they do get combat, they do get brawn, and there's some really good skills in those. Ball charge out of the brawn skills is one that I particularly like. Um, and with combat as well, you've got things like parry and um, a, a bunch of other stuff that you can use in close combat, which will help you as well. Um, <coughs> so, yeah, I'm going to give the, the Butcher a massive A star here as well. Um, we're going to talk, talk about weapons uh, in a bit, but... Generally speaking, if you're looking at the box that you get for Corpse Grinders, you don't get a lot of options on the sprue, actually, if you're going to build them. So um, often the way that most people will build the Butcher is with paired heavy chain cleavers. And those guys, um, paired, if you don't know what paired does, doubles your base attacks characteristic. So you're looking at four attacks 
Um, plus you've got one for charging, plus you've got one for an offhand weapon. So you're looking at six attacks when these guys charge, hitting on twos, and you're usually wounding everything on threes at the very least. Um, so that's scary, right? Um, paired weapons in general are very, very scary. They can be more scary on other things, but for um, a guy who only costs you 130 credits, it's, um, yeah, they're, they're very, very good. So the next one is your champion. So this is a corpse grinder champion. They are known as cutters. Now the cutter has um, similar sort of stats, um, slightly weaker weapon skill of three to the butcher. Um, they've got the same strength of four, but they've only got toughness three. Uh, they've still got two wounds. They've still got the same initiative, the same amount of attacks. Um, and their mental stats are slightly worse, so um, six, six, seven, eight. Actually, if you're if you're looking at that one, um, so if it's slightly worse, they've still got pretty good cool though with the six, so that's important. Um, these guys are great. <coughs> now they get a sort of starting ability, which gives you a 360 degree fighting arc with versatile weapons, I believe, in close combat, which isn't that helpful. It's the weakest of the bunch, actually. Um, but there you go. Um, these guys also get brawn, combat, and savagery skills. Now, savagery skills, I'm going to get into those savagery, sk uh, savagery skills, savagery, savagery skills in a bit, um, just to tell you how awesome some of them are. Um, and yeah, um, when you lack ferocity skills, some of the savagery skills really make up for that. Um, and these guys also have a cutter's mask, which means that they are also terrifying, meaning that they need a willpower check to, um, to shoot them, etc. too. <coughs> Excuse me. So, moving on now, we've got our specialists. Now these guys, um, you can... So they are specialists. They're a specialist type of ganger called the, the, um, the Skinner. Now Skinners are... Um, the reason why they're specialist is that they level up like a specialist. Um, they, they can't carry special weapons or anything, but they do level up like a specialist. So um, pretty cool. You can actually target how they develop and advance in the game. In campaigns, um, they don't just roll randomly um, in terms of their advancements there either. Um, so that's worth noting here for these guys. Now these guys uh, have got, again, the same movement. Weapon skill, three up. Um, ballistic skill, five. Strength and toughness, three. So they're a bit weaker. Uh, they've only got one attack, initiative four. Uh, one wound, of course, um, and their mental stats are um, seven, seven, eight, nine. So um, leadership seven, um, cool seven, willpower eight, and an intelligence of nine. So not not great in the mental stat department, but that's fine. You don't really need these for anything. Um, these guys' masks are slightly different in that they're not terrifying, but they are fearsome. So you do still have to make that willpower check to charge them, um, but you still can shoot them freely, which is a bit different to the um, to the champions and the leader there. Just going back to the champion quickly, the, uh, the, the cutter, um, it's worth mentioning that you can only ever have up to three of these in your gang, ever, I believe. So um, naught to three cutters in your gang, um, which is fine at creation, you're only really gonna have two, uh, maybe three if you really wanna squeeze three in, but um, you do have to balance that out with initiates in your gang as well um, and stuff too. So in terms of gang composition, that can make things interesting, but yeah, you can have three cutters. Um, in all. So the Skinner again, they get um, access to combat, savagery, um, and they also get the Berserker skill free. Um, these guys are, are, are 40 credits too, which is incredibly cheap. Um, yeah, with the Berserker skill, which gives you plus one attack when you charge. So if you're giving these guys paired weapons as well, then all of a sudden they also get something like five or six attacks too. Um, so these guys um, are, are great. I mean, 40 credits is a very, very cheap ganger, and these guys are beasts in close combat. They're gonna mulch nearly every other ganger type that you're gonna get in another gang. So there you go. So those are your corpse grinders themselves. Um, so there are, there are three types of corpse grinders. You've got your butcher, your cutter, and your skinner. Uh, and they're all very, very good. Um, I didn't highlight the price of the cutter. The cutter is 90. Um, and that's your champion there. So 90 credits for um, a real beast of a champion is pretty good too. Um, so you can see already that these guys are, are far too cheap. Um, they're costed quite strangely. In my opinion, they are too cheap across the board, um, but we're gonna talk about the real elephant in the room, and that is, of course, initiates. Now, initiates are your chaff, your cheap um, chaff. They're, they're kind of your juves, I suppose, but. They're not Juves because they're quite a lot better than Juves. However, they're costed the same as Juves um, in that they're 25 credits each. 
these guys um, have very average stats. Um, so they're, they're movement five, weapon skill, ballistic skill four, um, strength, toughness three, uh, initiative four, I believe, attacks one, wounds one, and the mental stats are eight, seven, nine, nine. So they're definitely worse than a scummer in a lot of ways. Well, not in a lot of ways, just in some ways. In, in the stat line alone, um, a, a scummer and an outcast gang is 30 credits, um, and they have slightly better mental stats uh, than an initiate. However, now this is the real problem. Um, initiates get flak armor out of the box. So they, they come with flak armor, which is something that normally costs your gang as 10 credits in most gangs. Um, so that's initially, you know, that, that's bumping them up to 35 credits worth. Um, and then they get a free skill. And that free skill is kind of disgusting in that it's infiltrate. So all of your initiates, and you can have as many of these guys as you like, um, all have infiltrate. So they can all just waltz into the middle of the field or wherever uh, and start the game from wherever, wherever they like, which is an incredibly powerful tool and screening aid for your actual corpse grinders. Um, the thing that makes them even more broken though, and this is where it gets really silly, is that they have absolutely no weapon restrictions. So what I mean is, you've got your corpse grinders, you've got your, your skinners, your cutters, your butchers. These guys only get close combat weapons. Um, your initiates can get heavy weapons, special weapons, close combat weapons, grenades, everything. So I'll let that sink in for a minute. These guys um, can infiltrate with heavy flamers or whatever, um, and they're, they're 25 credits base, which is just OP as fuck. Um, and there you go. That is your um, sort of rundown of the stats of the gang. And as you can see, we already have a very cheap, very, very effective, very broken <laughs> gang list there. Um, so I'm going to move into um, a couple of other things to talk about with Corpse Grinder Cults now. Here we go. So that was the sort of rundown on the stats of Corpse Grinders. Now I'm going to talk about the rest of the stuff. So of course these guys are fairly evil. They worship corn, or do they? They kind of secretly worship corn, but these guys are outlaws, and they'll always be outlaws. They can't not be outlaws. But it does mean you get access to the black market trading post, which gives you some really um, horrific things to um, boost your gang with mid-campaign. Um, one of the things that I've seen people use on Corpse Grinders, which is even more disgusting, it's falsehoods on butchers and things like that. That means that you can basically walk around for two turns without even getting targeted by anything um, to get right in people's faces. Um, so that's pretty disgusting. You also get, you know, friends on collars if you need them, but probably not. <clears throat> and of course, all the cursed Xenos uh, weapons as well, like uh, shard grenades and bale fire throwers and all sorts of horrific weapons that you can use um, from the black market trading post as well. Um, now, this is a subject that I've seen people talking about on forums like Reddit and Yak Tribe and stuff. Um, is can can corpse grinder cults be corrupted? Now. Rules as written, it's only the six house gangs that can be corrupted. I would say the common sense prevails here and that Corpse Grinder cults obviously already worship the um, god Corn, um, be it in a sort of covert way, so I would say absolutely not. Um, they don't seem the type of gang to suffer mutations and have a cow spawn either, so um, I would say from a fluff perspective, Corpse Grinder cults already get enough help um, from the blood god himself um, to, to not um, get any sort of boons from being uh, corrupted. So I would say an absolute definite no, and I can't think any ar arbitrator would um, allow that personally because it just makes them even more powerful, um, particularly if you do get those boons and give, you, um, give them a corn, corn worshipping boon so you can uh, re-roll re -roll your wounds and stuff once per turn and, and get a, a leader with one extra attack. Um, suddenly you've got eight attacks instead of six with that leader. So yeah, for me it's a bit of a problem. I would say absolutely not. <clears throat> but it's worth talking about this. Um, some arbitrators will let you do stuff, some won't. But I would say um, a clear no from my perspective in terms of can they be corrupted by other Chaos Gods. Just wouldn't suit the fluff either um, anyway. Um, so your house list now, moving on to the actual equipment and weapons that these guys get from creation. It is fairly limited. Um, but, you know, it has to be fairly limited because, I mean, half you guys are close combat based anyway. The other, the other ones, um, <sighs> you know, the initiates, they don't have any weapon restrictions as such, but they still get a couple of heavy weapons and special weapons on here as well, um, which is kind of gross, really. Um, so, 
your pistols, you've got auto pistols, stub guns, and hand flamers. Um, now, hand flamers are a real problem with this gang because if you give all your initiates hand flamers, they can infiltrate, flame the hell out of people, and then your corpse grinders can march up the field willy nilly and just start coup de growing everybody and chopping up anybody who didn't get got in that first instance. So, don't be that guy. <clears throat> in fact, don't be that guy in Necromunda anyway, ever, with any gang. Don't spam weapons like hand flamers because it's just it's just nasty particularly when you've got a gang here who is already um, not going to make you any friends um, <laughs> at all um, so yeah just don't do that I mean do one or two if you really have to but you don't need to corpse grinders are good enough without the help of hand flamers trust me um, you get flamers as their special weapon that is the only special weapon they get access to and that's fine flamers aren't as effective or aren't as efficient as hand flamers they're quite a bit more expensive they're only plus one strength really um, but they're still quite nice um, you know take a hand take it take a flamer great um, but again you know it's it's still pretty nasty um, on those initiates too um, Heavy weapons though, we get a heavy flamer. Now heavy we heavy flamers I've, I've covered in a, in a previous uh, video and heavy flamers are kind of garbage really. They're just so expensive for what they do. Um, you're better off just using hand flamers most of the time or a fire pike, which are great, um, but you don't get access to those thankfully. Um, but you can get heavy flamers if you really want to go down that route. However, of course they are unwieldy so you can't move and shoot with them and you don't get a, a suspenser on this house list either. So kind of redundant um, unless you infiltrate into a particularly interesting position to be able to use it turn one. Um, the other thing they do get those harpoon launchers and harpoon launchers though not very good are quite fun to use um, uh, and th these guys you know they, they um, can move and shoot with them as well so that's quite cool. I like the idea of harpoon launchers on initiates if you are going to take silly stuff like heavy weapons on initiates then harpoon launchers I haven't got too much of a problem with. Um, so there you go. Uh, now the close combat weapons is where things get horrific for everybody um, because we have boning swords. Now boning swords, I think a lot of people um, don't like boning swords because they are so cheap. I think they're 20 credits. Now boning swords um, are unlike normal swords in that they don't give you plus one to hit. However, they do give you two damage and I think minus two AP, um, which is just, it's just horrible, um, especially when you give them to um, you know, cheap chaffy gangers that get into combat and just take out a leader with um, a couple of hits there. Just with the two damage on a 20 credit weapon is is very, very good. Um, <clears throat> what else have we got? We've got cleavers, we've got paired heavy chain cleavers and heavy chain cleavers on their own as well. So that, like I said, the, the, the heavy chain cleavers are insanely good. Um, they dish out a lot of damage. They've got um, all sorts of extra weapon stats um, to, to just kill stuff. Um, and they're just really, really good, mainly for giving you so, much, so many more attacks um, with paired. Uh, they're quite expensive, but, you know, why not? Um, the other things you get are things like heavy rock cutters, which are kind of redundant in this list because you've got cheaper, better options, I would say. Um, and my favorite weapon in the Corpse Grinder list is the Rotary Flensing Saw. Now, this is basically a saw on a like a buzz saw on a chain, I suppose, that you swing around your head. It's got a four inch versatile, I believe. Um, which means that you can attack people from four inches away with it um, and it's just yeah it's got shred as well which I think um, on sixes doubles the AP off the top of my head I could be wrong there but, but these guys are great I think I had a champion with um, a skill that let him fight as a basic action so he was swinging it around his head twice and attacking people from four inches away um, in one turn which is really really fun and um, quite situational but still really really fun um, so that's your sort of um, your lowdown of the of the close combat weapons there. Of course, we get access to grenades as well, and this is where again things can get very silly with these initiates. Uh, we've got frag, we've got crack, we've got smoke, and we've got incendiary. Now, incendiary grenades are really nasty. Um, they're not too expensive, and you can get a five-inch flame template up in someone's Swayze turn one with your initiates infiltrating again. It's not a very nice thing to do, but it's totally doable. The other thing that you will see on a lot of corpse grinder lists is smoke grenades, and these are really important for screening with your initiates, chucking smoke grenades in, and walking up the field with your corpse grinders so you can get closer in. Um, of course, people will pick up photo goggles to um, mitigate this, but you know they're not going to have enough money to get photo goggles on their entire gang, um, so this can be a real problem. Smoke grenade screening initiates is 
quite a good tactic, quite a good strategy to go. In fact, with any close combat gang, smoke grenades are excellent just for closing the distance, basically. Um, so there you go. In terms of the armor, uh, the gang gets armor out of the box. They get plate mail on all their um, corpse grinders themselves and the initiates get flak as well. Um, so that's really, really good. You don't really need to buy extra armor. However, if you did want to buy extra armor, you get access to mesh and hazard suits as well, which is pretty nice. And armored undersuits as well to give that plus one save to your plate mail and all of a sudden bring it up to a four up or something. Um, in terms of the equipment, now we've got one unique piece of equipment and that's the Corpse Grinder eye Cult Icon which is slightly different to the Chaos Cult Icon in that this one for a simple action can give fighters within 6 inches plus D3 movement which if you have a bubble of fighters that are looking to charge that can be very very potent especially teamed up with stuff like the Butcher's D6 um, charge instead of D3 charge. Basically, there are loads of things that give these guys movement to be able to get into combat, be it tactics cards, skills, or um, things like the cult icon. Um, so very, very good, that one. You get bio boosters, photo goggles, respirators, and stim, plugs, stim slug stashes. Stim slugs, always good on a close combat gang. Um, you know, they're not that expensive, and you can just use it that turn to get that extra bit of punch, extra bit of movement, extra bit of... Um, extra bit of toughness and stuff um, just to survive that turn. If you really want to take something out that's big and important, um, it can be a real clutch thing to have stim slug stashes in your gang. Um, so there you go, those are the, um, the pieces of equipment that you can give these guys. Um, moving on now to, of course, the, um, the savagery skills and the skills that they can get, corpse grinders can get um, in the game. Um, I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of the, the six savagery skills. Some are insanely good some are not so good um, but we'll get straight into it the first one is avatar of blood now avatar of blood um, means that you can discard flesh wounds for every wound that you any every unsaved wound that you cause um, so quite situational um, it's a nice thing to have but it's certainly not a really powerful skill um, but it will keep your fighters alive slightly longer maybe um, but yeah, I mean, it's an interesting one, isn't it? I quite like the mechanics of that one. Um, nine times out of 10, you're probably gonna forget about it though. Um, Cause I just forget about stuff like that. The next one is Bloodlust. Um, now Bloodlust means that you can consolidate and coup de gras in the same um, charge move. So if you charge, take someone out of action, instead of having a choice between consolidation of two inches or coup de grace, now you can do both, which is actually very useful. Um, it, when you look at it on paper, you think, oh, that's not great, but the difference between taking someone down and coup de grace them for the XP and then standing in the open to get shot at with something that could t potentially kill you and, and or just being able to move that two inches into cover um, is really, really helpful. So I, I quite like this skill. Um, would I give it to someone uh, creation? I'm not too sure, but it is a really nice skill to have on, on Corpse Grinders there as well. The next one is Crimson Haze. I'd say this is probably the weakest one actually, and that gives you um, auto nerve test passes if you're engaged or while you're engaged. Um, so again, very situational, not something that is particularly fun to be honest, so I probably wouldn't take that one myself really ever. Um, you might have some uses for it and I may be not thinking about it, properly I haven't given it a huge amount of thought that skill so um, please do comment if you think that skills useful in any way um, the next one is frenzy now frenzy gives you plus d3 attacks at minus one to hit so it's a trade-off you get more attacks but you're less likely to hit now it really does depend what weapon you've got if you've got a weapon that does have plus one to hit then that will mitigate that a little bit um, but if you haven't then yeah it's okay you know you're just you're just making a trade-off for uh, the amount of tax against the reliability of those attacks. So really depends what you've got weapons wise and, uh, and how many attacks you've got as well. The next one is Killing Blow. Now Killing Blow is um, you get to trade all of your attacks for a single attack that does <laughs> double strength, double damage and no save is allowed. So that is potentially really, really good. However, you're always gonna roll that one to hit. You're always gonna roll that one to wound. Um, I just know from experience that ones turn up a lot when you roll a single dice, uh, it seems. So um, you're investing a lot in that. But if you want to take out an Ambot or an Ogryn boss or something big, that's quite a good, good one to use, I'd say, for that. Um, and the next one is the best skill in the entire Savagery list, and that, of course, is Slaughterborn. Um, I would say this one's the best anyway. Um, 
What this one does, it gives you plus one move per unsaved wound that you dish out. So, and this stacks throughout the game. So every, every wound that you give someone, you're gaining plus one movement. Um, so if, you're, if your butcher's running around and he's chopped up quite a few people, then he's gonna be an insane amount of movement. And then you could pair that up with the cult icon, you pair that up with stim slug stashes and stuff, and all of a sudden this guy can literally run halfway across a, a board. Um, <laughs> and it becomes a real problem because these guys just get faster and faster. But I tell you what, it's such a great fluffy skill and it really gives you that idea of that frenzied guy who just gets even more enraged and maddened throughout the game the more he kills stuff. So very, very cool skill. Um, but yeah, I mean, potentially incredibly, incredibly dangerous that one if you're playing against these guys. Um, so there you go. That is, uh, those are the skills. But um, if I was running a Corpse Rinder gang now as an experienced player, and I am an experienced player, um, I think I would deliberately nerf myself into taking suboptimal weapons choices. Um, there are things that I, here are some ideas I think that would fix corpse grinders and stop them being quite broken, which they are, let's be honest. Um, the first thing would be the initiates, of course. Now, I don't think there's a problem with the infiltrates so much. It's the fact that they can have so many um, varied weapons and stuff. Personally, what I would like to see uh, if there was an errata or a rules fix on these guys is maybe just giving them access to juve, um, juve type weapons. So maybe just close combat and pistols would be quite nice. Um, it would still make them very potent, um, but it just wouldn't make them so broken um, because they're so cheap. They get armor, they get infiltrate. It's just, it's just insane. Um, and they still have good weapon skill, ballistic skill and stuff too, of a four up uh, on both. So, you know, when you compare these guys to like a bone picker or something, I mean, I love bone pickers, but these guys just trump them in every department, you know, for five credits more. Um, so you see what I mean on that one? Otherwise, I think, um, I don't think there's anything wrong with the, um, the actual corpse grinders themselves. There has, to be, uh, there has to be a gang in this game that is best at close combat and this, this is them. Um, and that's fine. Um, you know, I've said before, it's not a balanced game. Necromunda, it's not supposed to be a balanced game. There's, there's always going to be one gang which um, does better against others, and there are always going to be counters and stuff you can do to, um, to counter these, these, these gangs. But I don't think the problem is the corpse grinders themselves at all. The problem is the initiates, um, and that's worth having a look at. And I think a lot of arbitrators might agree with that. Some might not, some might just be okay with it, and that's fine, but um, I think a lot of players aren't generally gonna enjoy playing against experienced players who abuse the rules with corpse, grind corpse grinder gangs, um, even less so than they would against players who abuse the rules with any gang, um, because they are so, so potent. Um, so there you go. Um, what else was I gonna talk about with corpse grinder cults? Um, I mean, in terms of a starting list and stuff, uh, you want to probably have a fair few bodies in there. I wouldn't necessarily um, spend too much on equipment, but it really does depend on how you run your um, campaigns and stuff. Um, but, you know, your gang composition is dependent on a balance between your initiates and your gangers and stuff um, too. So you've got, to, you've got to bear that in mind as well. Um, but yeah, I think the... Um, the best or nicest way to play them is uh, doing doing what I suggested really and giving the initiates very minimalist equipment just to stop them being so, so very OP, uh, which they are. So anyway, um, I think that's it for Corpse Grinders. I hope you enjoyed that one. Um, there, there are gonna be lots of opinions on this and I can tell that there's gonna be a lot of people commenting on this one with your ideas and stuff. I have played Corpse Grinders before and I did very well with them, and, I, and that was still with me trying as hardest as I as hard as I could to sort of nerf them a little bit, and not just give hand flamer spam to people and stuff like that. Um, I don't think I had a single blaze weapon actually as a result, um, but they still did very very well, and they were still very very powerful. So, um, just quickly actually, in terms of sort of, I think I might have mentioned it already, but in terms of 
countering these guys. Um, there are some gangs that will do better. Um, templates are the thing to counter these guys, um, just as, a, as an end note. Um, if you are really worried about corpse grinders getting all up in your face, then do take blaze weapons. You know, Cordor are particularly strong against corpse grinders because they have so many blunder poles uh, and um, big template weapons like your heavy crossbows and stuff. And they have cheap chaff bodies that they don't mind just throwing into the mix. Uh, as well. So Cordor, Cordor or Redemptionists uh, both can be very very good against Corpse Grinders because they don't have to worry about the willpower checks to shoot them with flames. Um, uh, enforcers as well actually if you use concussion carbines uh, and stun grenades things like that they can be quite useful against them um, but uh, yeah any any sort of template weapon can can help you out a little bit there as well. Um, but my advice just stay the fuck out of the way. <laughs> Just don't play against Corpse Grinders. Um, but they are fun. They are fun um, to play with. Um, and I think, yeah, again, like I said, for new players, they're actually a pretty good introduction to the game. However, um, if you're looking to make friends in a gaming group, then um, it's not necessarily the, white, the right way to go. Um, so just <laughs> bear that in mind. Um, and there you go. Uh, please like, share, subscribe. Uh, I'm going to be doing Ogrins next, I think, which will be really, really fun. Um, uh, and yeah, uh, long may this continue. I need your support, so um, yeah, please, uh, please do continue to support me in these uh, in these videos. I've got a little bit more time on my hands in the next couple of days, so I might actually try and get a few videos done all at once um, and spam those out, just like you would with hand flamers. So um, there you go. Peace out. <laughs>